everybody who's watching me on Facebook and uh, Instagram. I got to start all over. But basically what we're getting into. All right. In 2018, I'm going to jump straight into it. In 2018, if you still believe the lies about Africa, I have to question your intelligence. OK, I have to question your intelligence. And, and the issue I have. With the people who are still leveraging old stereotyped excuses on why they don't want to go. And, and I mean, we're still leveraging. I mean, let's update our excuses and stereotypes on why, you know, you can't go to Africa. You know, if you're still using Ebola in 2018 as an excuse why you can't go. If you're still using. Um, what other excuses? Conflict and war. I mean, let's update these African stereotypes, at least. It's like you're still using the old stereotypes from five years ago, from 10 years ago. You're still using those same stereotypes as excuses on why you cannot go to Africa. And, and, and the thing is, is like the media Is more up to date now. I mean, the media, they, they, I mean, the media is under the impression that, look, you know, since Africa. You know, since they have access to the Internet and news and media and, and social media, we can't really lie on. We can't really tell the lies and spread the, the, the negative propaganda on Africa like we used to back in the day. But you guys are still, it's like you guys are behind the media. You guys are still using the old lies and propaganda and stereotypes from 10 years ago when the media isn't even pushing these old uh, stereotypes today. Only thing that got pushed was when uh, Donald Trump mentioned the, the said the uh, shithole country uh, uh, stereotype. That's the only stereotype that was really had, that's really been pushed or put out there in regards to traveling to Africa. But you guys are still talking about Ebola, you know, shit from 2014. Ebola, uh, you know, South Africa and Ghana are the only safe places in Africa. Uh, you know, my friend got malaria a long time ago. Um, let's see here. It's expensive to travel to Africa. Uh, it's not safe, which I mean, again, I, I, I want to cover the expensive part. I mean, again, I don't know everybody's situation. But the people I see. Who were just Wakandans last week with dashikis on and, you know, they're Wakandans and they're reconnecting to their roots, you know, but they're choosing to, to drop money uh, vacationing in China and Thailand, Brazil, which, you know, nothing wrong with Brazil. Um, in Europe, you got the dough to go to Africa. And I mentioned this before. I want to say last month I posted on social media, the round trip tickets, okay, to Ivory Coast out of Newark, New Jersey for 300 and I got the travel insurance as well. So it's $350 round trip. I posted that on social media. And this is for the people like Dinah's look, I can't afford to go. Um, you know, I can't I can't afford to go. I posted round trip ticket for 350 bucks. You know, Dinah's, I can't afford to go to Africa. It's too expensive. You know, that's why we go to um, that's why we'll go to Cancun instead. 
That's why we will go to Cuba instead. That's why I will go to uh, Dominican instead. You know, that's why I will go to Jamaica instead because the tickets to Africa are just too much. You know, the ticket, a ticket to, we'll say Jamaica is um, 300 bucks round trip or 400, 500 bucks round trip. You know, that's my threshold. I posted a, a ticket, a promotion, Ethiopian Airlines, round trip from Newark, New Jersey to 330 for $330. You should have saw the excuses I got. Well, Dinah, you know what? It's 230 bucks, but what am I going to do once I get to Ivory Coast? You have the internet. Look it up. But if you're serious about going, buy the ticket. Buy the ticket and go. It's $350. Sorry if I'm spitting. $350, okay, for a round trip ticket. Why won't you jump on that opportunity and figure that shit out later? I guess $350. What are you talking about? You don't know anybody there. What are you talking about? You don't know what to do once you get there. What are you talking about? Well, that is, I got to see if Ivory Coast is safe. Are you fucking serious? That told me right there. You know, well, Dinus, how long's the flight? I know the ticket's three hundred fifty dollars. How long's the flight? Uh, the flight is probably about eleven hours. Oh, it's too long. I mean, what? I mean, dude, you do understand it's across, you know, the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, that's a big ocean. That's why it's called an ocean. It's not a lake. It's not a river. You're flying across the ocean. So yeah, it's gonna take some time. But still, the ticket is $350. So just go. Man, that is, I don't know. I can't do it. So that's why I knew that this, that the Black Panther movie was going to be as effective in regards to connecting the diaspora with Africa as roots are coming to America. Hey, Miss Muhammad, how you doing? What's up to everybody who's watching me on Facebook? That, that's how I knew it was going to happen. Because y'all not serious, man. And, and what, what pains me the most is that the people who make these excuses, our people, black people who make these excuses, will tell you how many degrees they got, how smart they are, which H HBCU they went to, what college degree they got, you know, how they balling out. But they still believe everything they hear on TV about Africa from five years ago. So all the lies from five years ago, because the media hasn't had the opportunity to really update their stereotypes on Africa. So all the stereotypes from five years ago, you guys still leverage that as an excuse to not go to Africa. And and the reason the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I had an interesting exchange on Facebook. What's up to everybody in my um, my YouTube chat? Thank you for joining. Hello, I'm dead serious. They are leveraging stereotypes from five years ago and further back on why they can't go to Africa. I'm like, it's 2018, fam. All you got to do is go on Instagram and Facebook. Reach out to somebody in that country where you're at, where you plan on going, and ask them, how is it? And there you go. There you go. But when I see our people, especially you're black in America, and you're allegedly college educated because you brag about it you got to tell about you got to tell everybody about your degrees you have how you know how smart you are but then you 
still leverage the same stereotypes that were used 10 years ago, 20 years, 30, 40 years ago. You still want to leverage stories from Tarzan or why you can't go to Africa. In 2018, I got a question of your intelligence. And then I know the excuses are, well, the white man did a great job programming us. I mean, for God's sake. I mean, you got the Internet. I mean, cannibalism. Voodoo, you know, a voodoo witch might come get me in my sleep. I mean, they're using all types of excuses. It's like, bruh, it's 2018, man. You got a so-called degree. That's why this college stuff is overrated, man. It's overrated. It's overrated. College is overrated. Uh, send me, uh, email me, uh, brother D Nubian. Send me an email, search for who at gmail.com. But yeah, college is overrated. You know, and, and this is my issue. We'll get upset on how we're misrepresented as black people on like Fox News or the conservative right by the conservative right, and even CNN to a point. We'll get upset and pissed off on how we're stereotyped. Tell people that the media is unjustly uh, stereotyping us. I know John Johnson said uh, in his book, uh, Succeeding Against the Odds, he said that... Uh, The only way black people made it in the news back in like the 60s, 50s and 60s, was if they committed a crime. That's part of the reason why he started Ebony Magazine. Or it was called the Negro Digest at that time. I believe it was called the uh, Negro Digest. That's what it's called, the Negro Dig Digest. He said he started it because of the how black people were portrayed by major media. Guys, you need to buy that book. It's an excellent book. You need to buy it. Kind of, it, it gives the, tells the origins of Ebony Magazine. The reason why John Johnson started it. And if you read that book, pretty much you can put two and two together on why Ebony's failing right now. You know, that's why I tell everybody, uh, that's an excellent book. You need to read that book. You know, so he said, John Johnson said the reason why he started Ebony or Negro Digest, which is soon Ebony Magazine. Then you had Jet Magazine as well, was because black people during the 50s were really before the, we'll say, 60s or 50s, even to this day, somewhat. The only way we made the news was if we committed a crime. So, of course, that stereotype is being propagated that all we do is commit crimes. Okay, so that's change. So we, we speak out against these stereotypes in regards to black America. But these same people who are upset and speak out on how we're being stereotyped here in America, believe the damn stereotypes when these same news outlets or media, or media platforms Stereotype Africa. And the shit that makes it worse is these stereo the, these media outlets are uh, are platforms like they really to be honest with you, I'll let uh, prove me wrong. Like they really don't stereotype Africa like that anymore. Because now we have the internet, so we know immediately when they're lying. That's what they think. But in reality, we got our people who are still leveraging the stereotypes from 10 years ago, old stereotypes. 
okay? Leveraging that as excuses to not go to Africa. You know, you got our people. Here, here, here's another one. You got our people. All right. Who call themselves woke and conscious. Who say they're woke. Say they're conscious. Who are trying to leverage this lie. That just because there are black people in Jamaica or black people in the West Indies. That for some reason that replaces Africa. And these are so-called woke and conscious people. So that that's what we're dealing with here. Exactly. I'm a trench. You made a great point. It used to be the media showing the stereotypes. Now it's our own people telling the lies. You got you made a great point. It's our own people now. Used to be the media, but now it's us. Perpetuating the lies. It's our own people perpetuating the lies now. Not the media. It's our own people. And you you guys were just so excited about Black Panther last week and Wakanda. Buying y'all the shikis, your, your, your car print garbs. Going to the movie. And, and like I said in the video before, you really gonna have people um uh, replacing trying to replace Africa with Wakanda. Okay, uh Muhuddin, you know what I mean. Going to an African nation, actually getting there. Hey, you know what? Same thing. Um, uh, um, the king, the god king Dorel. But I, you know what? Actually, I take that back. It depends where you're flying to in Africa. I've been getting uh, Yvette Carnell as well. But they said it made absolutely no sense. They're upset at non black owned, white owned movie studios for hiring uh, black people who are from America. Uh, as actors in Black Panther. But let, let, hold on, let, let, stop. Let me repeat that. They're mad at the black people who aren't from America. They're mad at them for getting jobs on Black Panther. When they shouldn't be mad at them, they need to go after the white owned studios. If you're really that, you want to be that petty and be upset about it. So Yvette Carnell is mad at like Lupita Neon. She's mad at her for getting hired or getting the role in Black Panther. But they're not going after the white studio heads who decided to hire Lupita, which is stupid. All across the board. No, the issue is a lot of black Americans are upset at Africans because they feel as if Africans haven't acknowledged uh, the role a lot of black Americans have played in Africa. Uh, as far as what a lot of black Americans have contributed to Africa. And also because if it wasn't for black Americans, Booker T. Washington, Martin Luther King Jr. be specific, uh, Africans wouldn't be allowed over here. But still, even with that being said, why would you be upset at Lupita? for auditioning for a job and then the white studio heads hiring her. Why are you mad at Lupita? And how stupid you sound when you, I guess, like, okay, say if you, if you they're not serious. I think they're just complaining, okay? They're just complaining. It's not logical. So you're going to go, if you're this upset about it, you're going to approach 
the white owned studio heads and say, hey, we're mad at you guys for hiring these uh, black actors and actresses who aren't from America. You only hire black Americans. That makes no sense. Uh, Brother D. Newby, you're a mod. That makes no sense. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you had her, you had the brother from um, from London, you had uh, Shuri, who's from, um, she's not from America as well. But still, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you're wrong at the wrong people. I mean, you're mad at the wrong people. No, 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 Mad Walker, you need to go on Yvette Carnell's um, Facebook page. She was going after all of the Africans or black actors and actresses who played in uh, Black Panther who weren't from America. She was going in on them. She was going after them. And it's like, why? I mean, the white boss is the one that decided that they got the job. So why are you mad at them for? For showing up to an audition and getting the job. You know, that's why. Like, like, well, why are you mad at them for? You know. Be, being replaced how? But, but, but Mad Walker, who, who? Who decides on who's going to be hired or replaced? Marvel and Disney's not owned by uh, African Americans. Who makes that decision? Matt Walker, who's the one that decided to hire them? That, that, that's the point I'm making. Who decided to hire them? That's what I'm saying. We're all the same. Yeah, why, the white studio head is the one that decided to hire them. So why are you mad at Lupita? I mean, at Lupita and and everybody else? No, you're right, Turkey. I am. But then uh, the other point, I made a suggestion. Okay, well, if you're that passionate, and if you care that much about uh, Black Americans ensuring that they have work in Hollywood, how about you start your own movie studio? Then they said, that's a cop-out. How's that a cop-out? Start your own movie studio. If you're upset about it, start your own movie studio and hire nothing but black Americans. Problem solved. But at the same time, if you do that, like here in Atlanta, I'll give you an example. You have a lot of African-owned, um, Jamaican-owned, West Indian-owned businesses. Do we tell them to hire their Black American, I mean, to fire their Black American employees? Is that what we do? So if you don't want African You know, actors or actresses to play, um, work in Hollywood. If you don't want black people who aren't from America, if you don't want them to work in Hollywood, then the African business owners, the um, the black people who have businesses who aren't from America, business owners here in America, should they fire? their black American employees or should they not hire any black American employees? I didn't get an answer. I didn't get an answer. So just, it, it didn't make sense. Nah, but Osmoon, everyone doesn't want to be African and that's the point I'm making. They want to be Wakandan. They don't want to be Africa. They want to be Wakandan. But like I said, if you're not happy, if you're not happy with that, then build your own movie studio and hire nothing but black American actors and actresses. No, nah, we can't do that. That's that's a cop out. How is it a cop out?
It's a solution. No, it's not. It's not a solution. That's a cop out. Yeah, start your own studios, have your own, build your own distribution network, and then hire your own black American people then. No, nah, that's a cop out. How's it a cop out? But you're upset at Africans getting a job in Hollywood. Man, Walker, you have to explain it to me, man. Man, Walker, you'll see what Yvette was talking about eventually. What was she talking about, Man, Walker? Because at the end of the day, again, it's the white studio heads who own the studios, who owns Disney and Marvel, who decides who's going to play what. That's what it is. So why are we mad at Lupita? Or the uh, the brother from uh, England. I love I like I lo actually I love Damon Dash. It's just uh, Damon Dash was ahead of his time, which is a good thing. But a lot of people just didn't appreciate his delivery. A lot of people couldn't handle his uh, delivery. That's the thing. Just a lot of people couldn't handle his delivery. He was just too upfront. I say this, Damon Dash, the way he postures himself or his delivery is similar. O'Shea Duke Jackson, thank you for the super chat, brother. It's similar to uh, what Monique is doing right now. And see, a lot of people can't handle that. And I think the main reason why is because a lot of black people in the entertainment industry who posture themselves in a certain way as far as being bosses and tough behind the scenes, they're really not. And so what Damon Dash and what Monique is doing or did was expose who's real and who's not. So that that's why a lot of people didn't like Damon Dash, because a lot of people we're playing this tough guy role, this boss role, you know, and in reality, behind the scenes, you know, they were kissing uh, daddy's ass. Ben, are you Benet's uh, brother? Is this little Ben Bailey, Benet's brother? So that's why. So that's why a lot of people are upset with... Uh, Monique, and that's why a lot of people are upset with uh, Dame Dash. But at the end of the day, they were right. All right. But it's just a delivery. They they couldn't handle the delivery because they were just too upfront and in your face about it. So, yeah. Hey, O'Shea, I still need your address so I can send your postcard. So I get the postcard out to you. What's up, Ben? I knew it was you. There's only one Ben Bailey in America. I knew it was you. So, yeah. Tell Benet I said what's up. Tell your mom I said what's up, too. So, yeah, I just I just wanted to come on and speak on that. But, yeah, I, I definitely I have to question your intelligence if you still believe the lines on Africa, especially if you're leveraging lies from 10 years ago. Especially black folks. What do you think about the Charlemagne interview with Monique? Um, I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. I mean, she called Charlemagne out. Or was it, what's, what's Charlemagne's real name? Um, Lawrence. What's, um, what's Charlemagne's real name? Is it Lawrence? Yeah, so she called him out on that. That was funny as hell. But again, I, I support Monique. Uh, I hope everything works out for her. Uh, but I would say this, if I were Monique with the momentum she has right now, I would be booking uh, I'll be doing a tour right now. Like if Monique came to Atlanta, I'll buy a ticket. Le no, it was Leonard. Was it Leonard or Leonard? 
If Monique came to Atlanta, I'll buy a ticket in a heartbeat. Yeah. Blaine, you, you, you're exactly on point. Um, Damon Dash and Monique have dignity. And that's something I did. In fact, Casma, I want to say I, I sent your, uh, your card out on Thursday. Doug, what's up, brother? Yeah, but I want to say um, that, that that's what it is. Damon Dash and Monique have uh, humility, especially as a black uh, as black entertainers, because you're 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 pretty much tied or told not to have humility, uh, not to have dignity, and just accept everything that gets thrown at at you, especially the bullshit. A lot of bullshit gets thrown out at, at you in uh, the entertainment industry. That's ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the reason why. I left uh, or I just stopped pursuing Hollywood and just went to corporate America. Yeah, I appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it, Victor. Victor, you should get your card hopefully Monday if you didn't get it Saturday already. So, but it was sent out. So, yeah, that's what it is. They have dignity. And in the entertainment industry, if you have uh, black people with strong personalities and dignity, uh, that's too intimidating. So Damon Dash, I love the moves he's making. Uh, in fact, his breakfast. In fact, I'm gonna tell you this: Damon Dash's Breakfast Club interview and Monique's Breakfast Club interviews are probably in my top five uh, Breakfast Club interviews. Interviews. Yeah, did you get it yet? They're probably in my top. They're in my top five Breakfast Club interviews. In fact, I'm gonna say. Louis Farrakhan, um, the Monique, the Damon Dash, those are my top three. But don't get it twisted. They they be cl they clown on a Breakfast Club as well. They tap dance on a on a Breakfast Club as well. Man, I just sent yours out Thursday. I just sent yours out Thursday, so you should be getting yours. Um, hopefully by sometime next week by Tuesday. But yeah, they were they were definitely sent out. Mel, you super chat, you hit the dollar sign button. Umar Johnson's was good too. That's top five. But Mel, let me know if you get it. Uh, let me know if you get it. If you don't get it by Tuesday by Wednesday at the latest, uh, let me know. Because, again, you guys aren't going to do me by a brother polite. If you pay for a product or service, you're going to get it. See, uh, Amra, I thought Breakfast Club was on uh, with Puff Daddy, with uh, Revolt. I am after answering. Oh, another thing, too. Mail, I have not sent yours out yet because I just I I'm sending yours out next week. In fact, Mel, I got let me show you something real quick, Mel. Give me uh give me, guys, give me a minute. No, give me 35 seconds. Mail. Hold on one second. Mail, is this the one you ordered? Mel Jr., is this the uh is this the joint you ordered right here? Okay. I'm gonna send it out uh tomorrow, Mel. I'm gonna send it out tomorrow. This is uh, that's the one. I'm gonna send it out tomorrow. It's here, I have I have one in stock. I appreciate the anti gravity. Hey, anti gravity, you going to South Sudan or uh, Sudan, Sudan, the cartoon? 
But man, I'm gonna send it out um tomorrow, fam. So you should get it shortly. Put this over here. Straight, I got your measurements. Yours is being worked on. But all right, family, I'm not gonna stay on here long. I'm gonna go ahead and uh what time is it? Yeah, I gotta go meet some people. So everybody, thank you for joining me. Uh for those who super chatted, thank you so much for super chatting. I might come back on later on tonight, I'm not sure. Uh, but again, everybody, thank you so much. Make sure you guys, if you're new to this platform, make sure you subscribe, please. Uh, like and share the videos as well. Uh, make sure you go to Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Search for Uhuru, the tag name on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, make sure you go to Africa Personified on Instagram and Facebook. And then make sure you go to search for Uhuru.com, which I'm redoing that entire site. Um, in fact, search for Hulu.com is going to moving forward come in the next couple of weeks. I should be done with it. That's going to send you to Africa personified dot Africa. You know, they have the dot Africa extension now. So I'm definitely uh, going to be going to be pushing that. So make sure you go there. Brother, where's a where's a nation of Islam grocery store at in Atlanta? I don't know. Uh, I never I never been to one. I didn't know they had a Nation of Islam grocery store in Atlanta. Also go to um search for whoer.com, go to dinosamir.com, go to Amazon.com, search your name Dinosamir, please buy a book. Ben, tell the family I said what's up. Tell Benet, tell your mom, tell everybody I said what's up. Everybody in the chat room, Ben Bailey, we went to elementary school together. We went to elementary school together. Everybody in the chat room. So family, right? But Bantu, we we spoke on that yesterday with the brother Samora. Uh, that Ghana, that right of abode law in Ghana is it's still a lot of red tape. So just want to put that out there. But everybody, thank you for coming on. Dinosaur Samir, search for Huru. To next time, peace. <laughs>